Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is one of the most requested videos in the channel and that is how to play jungler. Now since I was out of station for the last week, I wasn't able to do any of the voiceovers that you guys have been asking me. But now I'm back and I should be able to make a few videos this weekend which I will be releasing over the course of the next week. So stay tuned for those videos and without further ado, let's get right into the guide. Now this video will be longer than my usual videos because we will be having two matches. In the first match I will be playing Zephyrs and the bottom lane will be Abyssal lane and the second match I will be playing Darcy and the bottom lane will be Dark Slayer lane. Since there are two types of rotations that a jungler should do, I will be covering everything that you have to do as a jungler when it comes to rotations, securing objectives and ultimately securing victories. Now. The first and foremost thing that you should do as a jungler is to equip punish as your talent before entering a match. Here you will see that Aurum tries to invade and this is something that most of the Aurum players or a lot of other heroes also can do this and that is to invade the enemy jungle and try to slow down the enemy jungler. So what basically happens here is their jungler that is the Murad he is uh, taking his buff like uh, easily whereas Aurum and Florentino try to invade me and try to slow down me but what I do is and what you should also do is don't waste any time take the sage buff and immediately come out and start farming the other side of the jungle because most of the time it won't be effective to fight them you will just be wasting a lot of time and in the meantime the enemy jungler will be leveling up and also here since the enemies got my vision from that uh, vision bird, Violet also tries to disturb me and we still manage to last hit all the creeps and now what I am doing is, Violet will try to come back to the lane right so she will surely take the longer route around the abyssal dragon slayer and there we go and we catch her but their flash also comes to help her and our team is finally here and we manage to get a kill on Violet now without wasting any time I go back and clear the abyssal lane with my marksman and that brings me to level 4. Usually if you clear all the jungle creeps that is 2 creeps and 1 buff on the right, left side, 2 creeps and 1 buff on the right side, you will be automatically brought to level 4. But since I missed 2 creeps because Aurum invaded, I had to share some of the xp with my marksman in the bottom lane to get to level 4. Now I recall, come back and start clearing the other creeps. Now I'm coming back to what I was explaining to you at the start about uh, using punish and only if you equip punish the jungle items will be unlocked for you and you will be able to buy them. So what the jungle items do is basically they help you to clear the jungle faster and if you have the jungle item you get more xp from the creeps as well. So never try to jungle without having the jungle item that is the small sword and soul reaver loki's curse. Or Leviathan. If you didn't already know, killing the spirit sentinel also gives gold and XP to your entire team so it is also good to take even if it is inferior to the abyssal dragon there is not a lot of competition when you try to take it. One of the most common mistakes that I see a lot of people do is to go to a lane and keep waiting in the brush forever trying to kill the enemy laner. So for example, if they go to uh, the abyssal lane and their marksman will be standing inside the tower and they will be waiting like one whole minute trying to get a kill and this is basically wasting a lot of time and in that time you could have gone to different lanes, shared XP and gold with your team or even cleared your jungle if it had spawned. So never waste time as a jungler, always keep rotating around the map and whenever your jungle spawns immediately clear it. So the last point here is very important because only if you clear the jungle it will spawn again. So if you waste time and if you don't clear your jungle you are basically wasting a lot of experience because only if you clear it it will spawn again and you can clear it again. Now that was a really dumb death on my part but we're back and I want you guys to notice something really carefully here. As you can see in the map, my sage buff and these two creeps have spawned but my might buff and the other two creeps haven't spawned yet. 
The reason behind this is obvious. It takes 1 minute and 30 seconds for the buff to spawn again. So it has been 1 minute and 30 seconds since I took the last sage buff. So here I am trying to get the second one and their Aurum uh, is also back and like I said the first time I am just ignoring her and I am clearing my creeps without wasting time and if you had noticed pro carefully in the map you could have seen this violet coming through the mid lane and I tried to predict her with my ult but since I missed I immediately come back to the red side of my jungle without wasting any time so this is what you should do instead of trying to fight when your jungle is already up you should always try to clear your jungle before fighting because only if you clear it it will spawn again in the next 1 minute and 30 seconds so after clearing the red buff i come again to join the fight now the abyssal dragon is a very important objective that you have to set secure as a jungler but in this match you can see that i'm not trying to get the abyssal dragon and the reason behind it is we are behind our team is behind so if i try to get the abyssal dragon and if i end up dying their team will secure more objectives and they will be able to snowball even harder so that is why i am trying to avoid going for abyssals we might try and uh, steal it but it it is not a good idea according to me to try and get the abyssal dragon now and here we managed to get a very good kill on flash but Unfortunately, I got caught by Aurum Salt. But since Zephyrus has a really OP passive that uh, gives him a lot of damage reduction when his HP is low, I was able to survive without dying. So now let's talk about jungle stacks. As you can see above my restore button, there is the symbol of Leviathan and the number 17 written on it. What it means is that I have killed 17 creeps after I bought the jungle item. So getting each stack when you have leviathan increases your match HP, max hp and if you have soul reaver as your uh, jungle item killing a creep gives you more attack damage so all these jungle items have their own uh, power up when you kill a creep and in our case we are using leviathan so it gives us more max hp so this is one of the important reasons for you to clear your jungle frequently and to maintain your jungle cycle and here I had a suspicion that the opponents might be trying to take the abyssal dragon so I try to go and steal it but it looks like I've arrived too early and the murad has just started it so I end up dying here and still the abyssal dragon got a kill on murad which is our kill now and these are some of the good clips from this match this uh, shows the power of Zephyrus and Zephyrus when his HP is low he gets a lot of damage reduction just like I said so here even with Aurum ulting me and even though Violet had a lot of gold I was still uh, able to kill her so here what I am trying to do is since uh, Violet and Florentino are already dead and they have not respawned yet this should be the best time for us as a team to get the Abyssal Dragon because only Murad, Flash and Aurum are alive so it would be best if we fight now because it will be 3 vs 5 uh, 3 vs 4 but still uh, overall our team performance was not good and we lost the fight and Violet has al also come here and we end up dying so that uh, lost us this match and as you can see Violet has also taken the Abyssal Dragon so it will be even harder for us to kill her now because she has the Dark Blessing so I'll give you a quick tip on what to do when situations like this happen. So basically what you have to do is start pushing one lane and since you are a jungler you should be stronger than most of the enemy heroes. So as you can see I started pushing the bottom lane instead of uh, worrying about what is going on in our high ground. So what this basically does is it forces the opponent to respond to you because if they don't respond to you, you will uh, take their tower but if they send one opponent to stop you you might kill them and still take the tower so as you can see now you will see that uh, a lot of the enemy t uh, team members will try uh, come and try to stop me so this gives a better chance for my team to fight in the high ground because there are only two people there and as you can see 
Florentino, Murad and Flash are here to stop me. But still, our team, uh, I think Superman was just a beginner. So, we couldn't do much uh, there and uh, we are also lost uh, in the high ground tower also. So, that ultimately costed us the game. But, uh, uh, split pushing is something which you can do in most of the cases unless you are playing a hero who can clear minion waves easily like Darcy or something but in case of an assassin you should always try to split push when the opponents are trying to uh, take the abyssal or dark slayer and end the match now let me show you guys the second match that i have for you today and we'll be playing Darcy and this time the dark slayer uh, lane will be in the bottom so I'll be telling you how to do rotations when you have the Dark Slayer lane as the bottom lane and the Abyssal lane as the top lane. So these are the builds Arcana and the enchantments that I'll be using for this match. And now let me give you a very important tip and that is always start from your sage buff. It doesn't matter what hero you play, you may even play heroes that don't need mana at all. But you have to start from sage buff. And that is because it gives you the 20% cooldown reduction on your abilities and any hero is ability dependent in such low levels like level 1 or 2. So it is always best if you start from the blue buff and work your way through the jungle and go to the red buff and then end up in the bottom lane whichever lane it is. It might be the abyssal dragon lane in the bottom which would be good for you because most of the fighting will be happening there. But even if it is the Dark Slayer lane on the bottom lane, it doesn't matter and I'll tell you how to rotate when you have the bottom lane as the DS lane in this match. Now as you can see, we are almost done with our jungle and it looks like Zuka is playing aggressive and he gets caught in our ult. So he ends up dying and Superman gets the first blood. So this is a really good start for the game and we'll take this uh, lane gold because we gave the kill for Superman. So it gets compensated and the most important thing that you should do when DS lane is in the bottom lane is try to gank the enemy DS laner. If the DS laner is paying attention to the map, he will not be fighting at 1 minute and 30 seconds because he will know that the enemy jungler will gank him. But if he doesn't do that, you can get a kill on him and then you can go and get the spirit sentinel. So like I said before, Spirit Sentinel gives gold and XP for your entire team as well. So first get it and then you can come to the Abyssal lane and by the time you get here, the enemy jungler should also be here. So you should force a fight if you have the advantage. Like in this case, Xanis is not very powerful. So is Darcy, but we have uh, pretty good heroes like Valhain in our team who are very strong early game. So we managed to kill Xanis and now we can get this uh, Abyssal Dragon without any trouble because Xanis is not here. So getting this Abyssal Dragon should give a good XP boost to all the team members. And now as you can see the jungle has started spawning again and so I go and start clearing it and this cycle will continue. So this is how you should play when the Dark Slayer lane is in the bottom lane. Start from the Sage buff as always. Then clear uh, the jungle, work your way through the jungle, clear the red buff, try to gank the DS laner, it doesn't matter if you kill him or not, try but don't stay, overstay there and waste a lot of time. So go there, if he is standing inside the tower just ignore him and go and get the spirit sentinel and then walk all the way to the top lane and you can force fights there and if you manage to win the fight you can get the abyssal dragon as well. Now this is a really good fight and since we have a lot of uh, gold advantage we were able to win the fight easily and now I'll go to clear the last creep in the red side and it 20 seconds the spirit sentinel will be spawning again so I'll wait here until it spawns and in the meantime I'll be clearing this creep and the vision bird and when the spirit sentinel spawns I can clear it and then I should go to the top lane. And sure enough the spirit sentinel also spawns so we should be able to secure it and then we can go to the top lane and personally I like spirit sentinel more than the abyssal dragon because there is not a lot of competition for it and most of the times you should be easily able to take it but for the abyssal dragon uh, it's quite risky but more risk and more reward so 
we should be able to secure the second abyssal as well and uh, we'll also win this team fight so this should be your jungle cycle when you are the jungler and the bottom lane is the ds lane start from the blue buff get the red buff get the spirit sentinel and then go to the top lane and get the abyssal dragon so that's it for the video guys i hope you all found the video helpful and if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button to show your support and also check out my other videos in the channel there are a lot of guides and tutorials hope you all have a nice day and i'll see you guys in the next video